Hello, this is Dr. Salvatore Vinciguerra, and in this video, I'm going to be continuing my discussion of dotted notes. I'm going to be talking about compound time signatures and dotted rests. And yes, music is a theory. It isn't always necessarily a law. So according to Costca and Payne in Tonal Harmony, which is a music theory textbook for college students, dots do present problems for musicians as they go to various time signatures, especially compound time signatures. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you some examples of this. This is a chart from Tonal Harmony, and as you can see, you have the dotted notes on the left-hand side, and if you would remember from the last video, that I was explaining to you that a dot, or the rule of the dot after a note, is that it adds half the value of the note that it follows. And this chart right here gives you a great example of what these dots are equal to, and it depends upon the time signature that you have. And you're going to be seeing this um, when I show you some examples. You should keep in mind as you look at this chart that as you have a dotted half note, you'll also have a dotted uh, half rest. You have a dotted quarter note, so you could have a dotted quarter rest. And the same is true for a dotted eighth note and a dotted sixteenth note. So here are some examples from Casca and Payne again of compound time signatures. And the simple definition of a compound time signature is a time signature that can be divided into other forms or other numbers or values. As you can see, the time signature 6-8 time can also be counted in 2. 6-4 can be counted in 2. 9-16 can be counted in 3, and so forth as you go down the chart and it can create problems of composing music using dotted notes and dotted rests. So here are the dotted rests that you may see. A dotted quarter rest, a dotted eighth rest, a dotted half rest, and I don't necessarily know if you'd see a dotted whole note, but it could exist in something like 6-4 time, but it may not really be necessary, as remember that this is a theory of music. It isn't necessarily definite, and as the theory does have problems when you're trying to compose and fill up measures, and different composers use this theory many different ways when they are trying to illustrate what they need to. So some of these definitions and time values of both dotted notes and rests uh, differ amongst musicians and composers and their interpretations of what they mean. So in this example, I'm using 4-4 four, four time. It starts off with a dotted eighth note. The dotted eighth note receives three quarters of a beat following the rule. You know, a regular eighth note would just receive half of a beat, so adding half of half is a quarter this dotted eighth note receives three quarters of a beat, and it's usually followed by a sixteenth note. And I'll have a whole nother video on sixteenth notes and these types of patterns. Here is a dotted eighth rest, and the dotted eighth rest is equivalent to the dotted eighth note, where it receives three quarters of a beat, but this time it's resting followed by either a sixteenth note or maybe even a sixteenth rest, but it would have to be a note because this is a rest right here, and then I have a quarter note, and then I have a quarter rest right after that. If you are to play this example, it would sound like this, one, da, da, three. This is an example out of the successful sight singing book. You notice that it starts off in six, eight time, then it moves to 9-8 time, and then it jumps back to 6-8 time. The key here is that the top number tells us 
how many beats there are per measure, so that would be six beats in each measure, but the eighth note is going to get the beat. So in this case, the eighth note is consistent not only in 6-8, but in 9-8 as well. So if you're counting the eighth notes, it would be one, two, three. The dotted quarter note in this case would get three beats because you're following the rhythmic rules of the time signature, and it would get four, five, and six. So this is a different way of seeing this dotted quarter note here in this compound meter. And here is where you would typically see a dotted quarter rest. And um, in this case, if you have 9-8 time, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, this dotted receive the other three beats of the measure. And this would be 7, 8, and 9, but of resting value. And you can see how this composer puts it in different places where they have it at the beginning of the measure. So in this case, it would get one, two, three of rest. And this is six, eight time. And then the second dotted quarter note would get four, five, six. Next measure would be one, two, three of rest value, four, five, six. So an excellent example to show you the dots. However, you and here's one of those issues that, you know, Koska and Payne talk about, is that some of these dots don't necessarily represent what the composer wants to happen here. And it would be silly to put a dotted whole rest in this measure where, um, you know, the whole rest basically to this composer means to fill up this entire measure of 6-8 time. And in 3-4 time, you would see a dotted half note filling up this particular measure, but you wouldn't necessarily see a dotted half rest filling up this measure. You would see a whole rest because the whole rest represents the whole value of that particular measure. So there are just some discrepancies in the theory where, you know, you're trying to put rests in. And the best um, visual thing for most musicians to look at to determine filling up the measure here would be the whole rest. This is Dr. Salvatore Vinciguerra. Thank you for watching this video on dotted notes and dotted rests. Please watch out for upcoming videos on learning how to read and write music and basic music theory. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to this channel, and have a great day. Thank you.